Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger are two of the most renowned investors of our time. Buffett is the CEO and chairman of Berkshire Hathaway, a conglomerate holding company with a market capitalization of over $500 billion, and Munger is the vice chairman of the same company. Both men have had a lot of experience in various industries, including real estate, which is the topic of discussion in this excerpt. In this conversation, Buffett and Munger share their thoughts on real estate as an investment. They discuss how real estate is not a commodity, but rather tends to be more accurately priced, especially in developed areas. They also touch upon the difficulty of finding mispriced real estate, except during times of chaos in real estate financing. They further explain how their tax structure as a corporation puts them at a disadvantage in the real estate market and how they spend very little time thinking about it. Despite this, they do mention some missed opportunities in the past during the RTC period where they could have made a lot of money if they had been geared up for it. We both had a fair amount of experience in real estate and Charlie made his early money in real estate. The second point is the more important point. That real estate is not a commodity, but I think it tends to be more accurately priced, particularly developed real estate, more accurately priced most of the time. Now, during the RTC period, when you had huge amounts of transactions and you had a you had an owner that didn't want to be an owner in a very big way and they didn't know what the hell they owned and all of that sort of thing, I mean, you had a lot of mispricing then and I know a few people in this room that made a lot of money off of that. But Warren Buffett discusses his and Charlie's experience in real estate and how it is not a commodity but tends to be more accurately priced, particularly when it comes to critically developed real estate. He notes that during the RTC period, there were a lot of mispricings due to the large volume of transactions and owners who didn't want to be owners. Buffett acknowledges that some people were able to make a lot of money off these mispricings. However, he emphasizes the importance of understanding the specific market conditions and context when evaluating real estate prices, as it can have a significant impact on pricing accuracy. Overall, Buffett's point is that while real estate may not always be accurately priced, it is essential to have a deep understanding of the market and the specific circumstances when evaluating its value. By doing so, investors can potentially identify mispricings and capitalize on them, as some people did during the RTC period. But under most conditions, it's it's hard to find real estate that's really mispriced. I mean, when I look at when I look at the transactions that REITs engage in currently, and you get a lot of information on that sort of thing, they're very similar. But it's a competitive world, and and you know they all know about what a Class A office building in, you know, in Chicago or wherever it may be is going to produce. So at least they have, they may all be wrong, as it turns out, because of some unusual events, but, but it's hard to argue with the current conventional wisdom most of the time in the real estate world. But occasionally there, there have been some, you know, there, there, there could be big opportunities in the field, but if, it, if they exist, it will certainly be because there's a, there probably there'd be a lot of chaos in real estate financing for one reason or another. We've done some real estate financing and uh, you have to have the money shut off to quite a degree, probably to get any big mispricing across the board. Warren Buffett is saying that it's difficult to find real estate that is really mispriced because the transactions that REITs engage in are very similar and the market is competitive. Everyone knows the value of a Class A office building in a particular location, and it's hard to argue with the current conventional wisdom most of the time. However, occasionally there can be big opportunities in real estate, but if they exist, it's likely due to chaos in real estate financing. Buffett explains that to get any big mispricing across the board, you have to have the money shut off to quite a degree. Charlie? Yeah, we don't have any competitive advantage over experienced real estate investors in the field and we wouldn't have if we were operating with our own money as a partnership and if you operate as a corporation such as ours which is taxable under chapter C of the Internal Revenue Code you get a whole layer of corporate taxes between the real estate income and the use of the income by the people who own the real estate so by its nature, real estate tends to be a very lousy investment for people who are taxed under subchapter C of the code relating to corporations. So the combination of having it generally a lousy activity for people with our tax structure 
and having no special competence in the field means that we spend almost no time thinking about anything in real estate and then such real estate as we've actually done like holding surplus real estate and trying to sell it off i'd say we have a poor record at yeah, c corps really do, it doesn't make any sense i mean i know there are c corps around that that, that are in real estate but it, there are other structures that are more attractive. There really aren't other structures. I mean, Lloyd's is an attempt at it to some degree, but there aren't other structures that work well for big insurance companies. Or, I mean, you can't have a Walmart very well that, that does not exist in a C Corp. So they are not subject to S Corp or partnership competition that determines the returns on capital in, 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 in the discount store field. But if you're competing with S Corp, equivalent of S Corps, REITs, uh, or partnerships, or individuals, you're, you've just got an economic disadvantage as a C Corp, which is, for the, those of you who don't love reading the Internal Revenue Code, is just a standard vanilla corporation that you think of, all of the Dow Jones companies, all of the S&P companies, and so on. And uh, as Charlie says, it's unlikely that the disadvantage of our structure combined with the competitive nature of people with better structures buying those kinds of assets will ever lead to anything really interesting. Although I would say that we missed the boat to some extent during the RTC days. I mean, uh, it was a sufficiently inefficient market at that time and there was a lack of financing that we could have made a lot of money if we were, had been geared up for it at that time. We, we actually had a few transactions that were pretty interesting, but, not, but nothing that was significant in relation to our total capital. We thought significantly about buying the Irvine Corporation yeah. when it became available. So that's the only big one I can remember that we seriously thought about. Yeah, that, that, that was in 1977 or so. Way there. Back. Yeah, Mobile Oil was interested in, you know, Don Brent ended up putting together a group for it. But, you know, that kind of thing could conceivably happen, but... In conclusion, Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger both agree that real estate can be accurately priced most of the time, and that their corporate tax structure puts them at a disadvantage compared to other investors. They admit to not having any special competence in the field and spending very little time thinking about real estate investments. However, they did miss an opportunity during the RTC days when the market was inefficient. Thank you for watching this discussion with Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger on real estate investing. We hope you found their insights valuable and insightful. If you know anyone who may benefit from their wisdom, please share this video with them. Let's continue to learn and grow together.